Hey, how's it going? Steve here, and welcome back. Uh, you saw the intro there, and I had this shelf, and I kept putting pencils and all kinds of things up on it, and every time I wanted to pull something off, everything came down, and it drove me crazy, and long enough that I finally said, I've got to solve this problem. And the way I solved it is with this. So this is a little tool caddy or pencil caddy that I built, and you can see it contained all of those things that were on my shelf in nice little compartments. It also swivels, and there's a little cup in the top for odds and ends. Now it uses uh, that living hinge uh, kind of structure that you've seen a lot, and I've done a couple of projects with it. Now, I thought I would put together the design and show you how I, I cut out and assembled this. Now, fair warning, this is a bit of an advanced project. There's a few things that you have to kind of squeeze and twist to get into the right positions in order to get it all put together. But I'll show you all of the assembly piece by piece and I'll flag some warnings when, when we get going. So with that, let's get started and uh, we'll of course start with the design. So I'm not gonna go into horrible detail here on, on how I designed each and every part, but I'll show you just this one. Uh, I started with a simple sketch and you can see this is the piece the, that holds the cups in place. There's one of these on the top and bottom of the carousel. And when I was done, I extruded it out to three millimeters because I'm using three millimeter plywood in this case. Now you can also use acrylic here. Everything here is designed uh, to also allow you to flex acrylic and uh, successfully build one of these. And I've built them myself. So once I had all of these parts designed and you can see there's quite a few of them here. There's a, you know, top plates and cup holders and all kinds of stuff. Um, I put it together in an assembly and you can see that yellow piece down at the bottom and there's one at the top there as well are the pieces I showed you in the sketch. And you can see the bottom plate here is the fixed piece. It's the only fixed piece in this whole design. And there's a hex nut with a threaded rod that runs all the way up to the top. And there's another nut at the top here. So that's basically how, how I designed it. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a little more of an advanced project, so it did take me a couple of implementations to get this right and uh, make it easy to put together. So uh, innovation and, and uh, evolution are tightly coupled. So uh, with that, I, I piped all of this uh, into SVG files and sent it to Lightburn and then cut it out on my laser. Now on the subject of lasers, I'm using three millimeter hardware store plywood here, which you could cut with either a diode laser or a CO2 laser. Uh, I'm using my, my 90 watt CO2 laser only because the footprint of the work area is bigger and it makes it easier to lay things out. But you can use either laser. Acrylic could be a little more problematic for a diode laser, but certainly the design supports it. So if you have a CO2 laser, give acrylic a try. <coughs> All right, before I really get rolling on the assembly here, let me first footnote it by saying this is an advanced project and there's lots of things to do. So the assembly is actually quite drawn out and I didn't want to you know, make the video boring, yet I wanted to cover how most of the pieces go together. So it's clipped down to the bare minimum and if you are building one of these and you're struggling, maybe you don't know how something goes together, uh, either leave a comment down below or uh, shoot me an email. Uh, my email is in the description and I'll do my best to, to give you a hand. It's not that bad, but there are quite a few pieces. And the first couple pieces I'm gonna to put together here are the ones that make up the top and bottom part of the carousel. I'll start with the bottom. And I'm just using uh, Type On 3 glue here to, to glue these two plates together. Uh, you could easily use CA, and you will see me use CA in other parts of this project. Uh, now you'll notice I stuck a bearing in the center hole there and I'm using it just as an alignment pin so that when you put all these pieces together they line up properly. And once you get these two pieces in, you can tape them down, to, tape them together to just clamp it down for a while. 
And I'll put the bearing back in because I'm going to put this, uh, this ridge plate in and this will be the piece that holds the, the center spindle cup in the middle uh, to keep the two plates apart. And once I get that done, I just wipe off any excess glue. And then I repeat the same process for the top plate. Now, the top plate doesn't have a cover, obviously, because we have to put the cups in there and there has to be a way to get the pens and pencils in. And it, so it's just two plates gluing together there, but I'll still use the same bearing kind of alignment. The second step is to seal the bearings into the center holes in the, in the pieces we glued together. Uh, so what I did was just mix some five minute epoxy up and put a very light coat inside the, inside the holes and then press the bearings in. Now be careful when you're pressing these in, if you get glue underneath them, uh, make sure you clean that epoxy off before it cures. So next I want to glue up the center tube uh, that runs up the center of the caddy and in this case I'm using that flexible piece that one of those flexible pieces I created and, and uh, type on three glue. This is a great place to use CA uh, because obviously you'll have to clamp it with type bond and that takes an hour while you're waiting and it's a real pain. But when that glue is dry, we can then adhere our two pieces together, uh, the top and bottom pieces, and I'm using CA and some accelerant to put the bottom piece in because that one we can just drop in and, and we want it to cure right away. And I just press it on there and within a second or two, it's, it's dry. Now the top piece, because I might want to rotate the top piece around to get it aligned properly, I'm using Type On 3. Uh, and uh, I put it on there and I'll, I'll align the holes in the top piece and the bottom piece and then I'll, I'll start sliding the flexible uh, cup pieces in and you notice I started with the with the sharp edges in first so that they don't get caught up and then I slide the, the curved part at the back in and do the same thing at the bottom and when it's in there it looks nice and then I can just quickly repeat that for the next five uh, pieces and uh, it, you'll see it looks pretty nice. I won't bother gluing these because uh, it's okay if they float around a bit. There's gonna be a piece on top that's gonna be glued to hold everything in place. And when I put that top piece on top, it'll just sit on t in aligned with the bearing and it will be oriented so that it overlaps with the, with the ends of the flexible cups. And I'm going to use CA. If you're a little nervous, this one is a one-shot deal, so you have to be very accurate when you drop this in. Uh, I'm using CA and Accelerator, but feel free to use uh, uh, Type On 3 or some other wood glue uh, and give yourself a little more time. Uh, in this particular case, for the purposes of getting this video done, I'm just using uh, CA. All right, it's time to start making this look like an actual carousel. Now, I won't show you how I put the base together, but it, I, all I did was the same thing. I glued the two round pieces with the hex hole in the center, uh, and I actually used a hex nut to align them, and then I glued that hex nut in and threaded the threaded rod in. Now, make sure when you do this that the locking part of that hex nut is on the bottom, and make it flush with the bottom, so when you put the nut in, press it down on a table or something to make sure that it's flush. Uh, and then thread the threaded rod in so it's flush with the bottom of that nut. Now I also slid a, a flat washer in between the base and the carousel part itself and then I put the carousel on threading it through the bearings and you can see it turns quite well and then I'm going to take a 13 millimeter nut and just put it on the top. Now you don't want to clamp this down really tight so I'm using a 13 millimeter socket but I'm just hand turning it and while I'm turning I'm making sure that it spins easily. And the last step here is to put the cup on the top and uh, that's just a case again of using some CA and accelerator and plopping it on there really quickly. Again, you don't have a whole lot of time with CA and, and once it's got an accelerator, so you have to be quick and press it on. Now, there's also a bottom plate and uh, you can put some CA on it and glue it in there permanently or you can leave it leave it unglued. It's going to fit in there fairly tight anyway. Uh, and you might want to do that just in case you want to ever get access to that nut again. And the very final thing to do here is to load it up. And uh, I've taken all the things off my shelf and I'm, I'm dropping, in, dropping them in here. You can see there's quite a bit of room. Uh, again, I can use that cup for small bits and pieces on the top and that's it. 
All right, so that's the project. I'll put all of the SVG files to build this on the member site. Now, if you're not a member, uh, bad news on this one. I'm not gonna create an Etsy version of this. Uh, I'm not trying to force you into membership. It's just that the, pro the tolerances here in this project are very tight. It is a pretty advanced project and it is a bit of work to get it all together and, and get it working smoothly. So uh, no Etsy, unfortunately. However, if you're not a member, you can click the join button down below there. It, it, it'll really help out the channel uh, because I use that money, uh, the $3 a month that, that you provide, I use that money to buy materials and things for projects. All of the material for this project came from members directly. So uh, it also gives you access to me if you are building a project and you run into a problem, um, I'm happy to help and I'll get back to members really quickly. So. What makes this project possible is the ability to create that flexible plywood uh, or acrylic in, in some cases. And it, I did a video a while back and I'll put a link up above here so you can go understand how that process works. Go watch that and I'll see you over there. And uh, with that, we can wind down here. So get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.